I, I was on TikTok. <laughs> you were. I was on TikTok. Yeah. Um. um. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Like, damn. The reason I stopped using that is because it took as much a lot, a lot of my time over there. Yeah. And then, like, just now, I told you, like, okay, I'm ready. And then you said, you're ready. And I'm just like, let me go check a TikTok real quick. And then it's like, real quick, ended up being like five more minutes. I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? (laughs) What is that? What did you find? Uh, (laughs) A bunch of everything. And just like a bunch of videos of people are going live. And I'm just like, what is all this? This mm-hmm. is new. I haven't been here like years. Yeah. Because you remember the last time you actually went live over there? What was it like? Um, it was probably in August. August? It was probably in August. Okay. <clears throat> like, yeah, I, and I think you would go live like, like during the day. Um, um, I don't think I could ever like catch you because I was at work when you were going live. Was it during the day? I yeah. don't remember that. Well, I mean, that's the last time I remember c- trying to catch you, it was like during the day. It was like one in the afternoon. I don't know. Um, was but, it really? Wow. I don't even yeah, remember that. But then again, well, like I said, um, that's what the last I, time I remember. But. Well, okay, that, when I went live by myself, that would have been, like, in August. But I did get, I jumped into some people's boxes. Okay. You know, the people I'm talking about. <laughs> like, I did jump into some people's boxes around September. Okay. And I was just like, oh, shoot, this place takes too much off of me. I don't feel like I'm going to be here that long. So I just stopped going back over there. I stopped oh, okay. checking it out. I deleted it off. I did the app off my phone. Everything. I was like, nah, this is too much. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, where we went back to, I was like, I was just like hanging around and stuff and continuing to do the podcast, uh, focusing on the podcast mm-hmm. up until January. Mm. Where I'm like, I'm a game. I'm gonna do some games. I'm gonna play some games real quick. And here we are. Yeah. Try checking back the place I didn't want to go back to. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I know, right? I'm like, ah, oh, should I go back over there? Uh, I could stream over there and then like have a new community have a new um new people coming up and like listening to the podcast and everything like yeah. a new i like but i hear about the wrestle talk community and i'm just like should i just do wrestling or should i just do like a bunch of other stuff that i just did over here on this side on the other side where we just where i'm at where all the um supporters are at basically and now that this place is ending should we go to TikTok and have a new support system there? Or should we go somewhere else, venture somewhere else, look for somewhere else? That's like the biggest question right now. What should we do? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we should just give it out, like, right there. Like I said, just do what makes you happy. So <laughs> do, what makes the, do what makes me happy. Do what makes everybody, like... Uh, branch out basically Mm -hmm. time to branch out it's time to like sail off to the sunset and go somewhere else yeah somewhere where you're gonna get more support system and all of that so we'll see we'll see we'll definitely see you ready to start the show yes okay I'm ready all right. Welcome back, TikTokers, to another wild episode of Wrestling Content Redebauchery. I am Evo, and you are listening to From Under the Apron Podcast. You can listen to me on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or any other audio media podcast wherever are available. 
it's been a while since I had a guest on here. Actually, it's been a while since I actually spoke about wrestling. As you all may have heard, the show has evolved into something else. I was doing horror episodes last month, and people enjoy that. This month, I've cranked out four episodes within two weeks. I'm back to doing the two uh, episodes a week kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. We'll see how the, mo- the month goes. I'm a very busy man these days, basically. And I happen to have a lot of time on my hands just so I can crank out more episodes. And as you all may have heard, my next guest is a big supporter of the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, she has been listening to episodes, giving me ideas about episodes. And of course, being a part of episodes, (laughs) she's also a big supporter of a certain long reign world champion tribal chief. Unfortunately, every time she tries to make it to a SmackDown to see him, he is never there. I like to welcome back, and it sucks. (laughs) I like to welcome back my good friend, a patron, a big patron of the podcast. Uh, She's a big supporter of the Patreon page. Menace smiling. Hey, Menace. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. So excited for everything happening. Going good. Yes. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that the podcast birthday is coming up January 2nd. The podcast turns two years old, meaning season three will be underway. We've made it. We're here. We have arrived. Not only am I a podcaster, I can finally say I am a streamer. If any one of the supporters want to leave a few nice words, just hit me up on the email, send us a voice message on Instagram, or just show up on the, on the stream, and I'll give you information on where you can go. So with that out of the way, let's get you guys up to speed on what's been happening here. Um, what, we haven't done any uh, predictions episodes since back in August for SummerSlam, right? You haven't been on here, basically. I know. <laughs> and, uh, I, I mean, I, I know. I did. Be- I do believe I've told you since then that we should do predictions for the big pay per views, like yes. for Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, King of the Ring, possibly, and again, Survivor Series. Like all these other ones, it just takes a lot of time because then you want to do something else, and then you want to talk about something else. So, and it also coincides with the premium live events of that month. So, anything that you've enjoyed about wrestling since then, since we last talked in August, like anything that's come up, because this, well, this, this is wrestling centric, basically. We're going to talk about wrestling tonight. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> Finally. See. I think, no, yeah. So, I went to SmackDown back in April, and then in, you know, in, uh, then I went to um, Raw. So we had, after WrestleMania, it was so much fun. And I know, I think I talked about it back in August. But um, now I, I think the storylines are just getting so good. They are. So they are. And I'm liking the, the direction they're going. So. They really are freaking. It was last year at Survivor Series for War Games when... Um, was his face. Roman Reigns came out at the press conference at the end of the night and he said uh, this is basically the third inning. Yeah. We're now at the fourth or fifth inning, yeah. bottom of the fifth and he's, he's still champion. He still wants to go. If, if it means we're going up to ten or nine or ten innings, how does baseball work? Nine I don't know. <laughs> Nine Nine, if it means we're going up, unless it's a uh, tie, and then it goes into extra innings. <laughs> so extra innings. So let's say let's say we go up to nine innings. It means that we're gonna be like here for a while. So you know he's not going anywhere. No. Maybe he'll lose. Maybe he'll lose the belt. Maybe he'll, he'll finally get get rid of the belt from him. But yeah. still, he's not gonna go anywhere. He's still gonna do like extra extra innings in there. Yeah. So. But you know what's so crazy to me though is this time last year it was the bloodline 
that were all united, and now they're not united. Uh, they're like, all oh civil God. war. Yes. <sighs> so much has happened between August till now. <laughs> uh, Jimmy uh, betrayed his brother Jay, uh, turned on Jay, and then Jay turned face. He went to Raw, and he's doing his own thing over there. And Jimmy is still part of the bloodline, I guess. He's hanging out with his cousin, and he's doing some crazy ass stuff. He's doing Jimmy's doing Jimmy basically. Mm-hmm. Yeet. No yeet. <laughs> no yeet. No yeet. Oh my god. Oh my god. He, he is hilarious. Yes. That is hilarious. I am loving that storyline. Me too. All right. Um, Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, I was just saying, I don't, you know, I just, I'm so, you know, Jimmy is doing his own thing and Jay's doing his own thing. I'm like, I just don't know. I don't know if I want to see them fight each other. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I think it's going to come to, you know, come to it, but I don't know. Just, I like, them separate. I think it's really good because it shows their abilities. That's a WrestleMania match right yeah. there. Um, oh, gosh. For a night, night one opening match, Jay versus Jimmy. Oh. And, uh, freaking hell. <laughs> and then what? Next year, 2025 WrestleMania, you'll see one of the main event guaranteed calling it right now okay <laughs> that'd be awesome uh, as for roman we still he's still champion let him cook yeah let him do a thing everybody hates it but nah go for it well i bet the all the boomers hated when um bruno san martino was champion for years and years and years like if i uh, just kept seeing like if we had social media back then in the golden era, in the uh, 90s era, in the attitude era. It would still be the same. People would still complain no matter what. People would complain about Bruno San Martino. Why does he still have the belt? He sucks. Like, we never see him. He only shows up every three, four months. Attitude era. Why is Hogan the champion still? <laughs> what is the NWO? The NWO is stupid. It's the most stupid storyline ever. What happened to X Pac or Six? Oh shoot, Six sucks. I can't stand them. Blah blah blah. Goes to WWE. Hell yeah, X Pac. Let's go. Same person too. Yeah, right. <laughs> because that's what's been going on on Twitter. Like everybody was like bashing Jay Cargill. And like all these people were like, she needs, she's green. She needs to, she needs some extra work. I can't believe it. They never use her well. Go to WWE. That's what I'm talking about. That's my girl right there. Same person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same person saying, oh, she's going to do well over here. Let them cook. And this is how a champ, a uh, superstar is supposed to be presented. When um, Triple H was presenting her to everybody, he's like, this is Jade Cargill, all this stuff. And then like, um, she's looking at the NXT belt and Charlotte's all like what? Yeah. <laughs> like she just like faced off with everybody basically and she is like what's up? You know who I am right? Yep. Like yeah we know you who are. We're gonna find you. out. <laughs> yep you're gonna find out. But yeah those, those are like I love those. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. And I'm Dawn. And if you've ever watched a TV show and thought to yourself, oh my god, that season finale plot twist was absolutely bonkers. Or seen a movie and thought, wow, I need to talk to somebody about this train wreck immediately. Then we think you'll fit right in with our podcast, I Hate It, Let's Watch It. We watch TV shows like Riverdale and Emily in Paris. And movies like Deep Water, Killer Sofa, Rubber, and Deadly Illusions. And we give them the total rinse they deserve. It's basically group therapy for movie masochists. So come check us out wherever you stream podcasts. Survivor Series this year will be held at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Chicago, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, basically. <laughs> Rosemont, suburb of Chicago, Illinois, on Saturday, November 25th, uh, 2023. That's next week for us. 
Uh, we still got to get through Thanksgiving. Uh, should I ever tell them what, when I'm re- am I recording this podcast? Because I'm said uh, next week already. I'm recording it on Saturday. Like we haven't even watched Monday Night Raw yet. We don't know what's going to happen that night. But you know, I want to get this out there already. I'm going to post it on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, whichever. It, it'll be up for you guys to. And whatever happens on Monday, I'll probably talk about it the next time on the show. Uh, so let's talk about the first match on the card. I, I, we don't know when exactly these matches are going to come up, but hey, it's there. Carlito versus Santo Escobar for just a regular match. On the November 10th episode of SmackDown a few weeks ago, I think last week, Ray Mysterio and the Latino World Order addressed the Mysterio's loss of the United States Championship at Crown Jewel to Logan Paul. Oh, shoot! Did I forget to mention that Logan Paul is now the United States champion and that I loved it? <laughs> I mean, I, I predicted he was going to win against um, Ricochet, and I said, like, I hate to say it, but it's going to happen. And then here we are, months later, and we're like, this guy has not left. This guy's still here. He has a championship now, and he's all over fucking social media with the belt. He's taking a shower with it. He's having sex with his wife with it. He is sleeping in bed with it. He's posing naked, just like uh, Shawn Michaels and just like every other person that's posed naked with a championship belt with it. And now we're like, oh, no. And then he, um, what's his face? He got interviewed by his brother, uh, Jake Paul. And he did like a little impersonation of Triple H. And he's all like, Logan, I want you to tell you, I want to tell you something. There's one thing about uh, that we do not want you to do. We don't like it when um, our champions have sex with the belt on. And then he admitted that he had sex with the championship belt. Like, the reason we don't do that, Logan, is because somebody already did. <laughs> God. <laughs> we, <laughs> <We're so good. laughs> somebody did. Somebody already did. And then we look at the other person who's done the re, and he is just like, oops. <laughs> the real rated R superstar, Xavier Woods. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason we don't do that, okay, Logan? And now you're doing it? No, we're not doing it. Okay, so let's get back into it. Mysterio lost to the United States Championship uh, Crown Jewel to Logan Paul, who used brass knuckles to win. You saw um, uh, Santos Escobar come out and try to help Ray, and he like took the brass knuckles from the guy that was trying to give it to Logan, and then he grabbed the knuckles himself and put it in the, on the ring apron, and he left. He went after him. Um, but Logan used it and, like, he won the match like that. So, like, they blamed it on a little bit on uh, Santos Escobar, you know, all this. So Escobar then left the ring in his belief in the accusation, but later turned on Mysterio by injuring his left knee and striking it with the steel steps, turning heel. Finally, we're going to fight. We're going to finally see. Um, his old stable comeback. Forgot the name of his old stable. Legado de Fantasma. La, el Legado de Fantasma. But I don't know if Joaquin Wild and Cruz del Toro are going to come back with him. But uh, he might do something new with it. You know, like they, they might just release Joaquin and Cruz and like, let's start over. Let's start a new uh, Legado. Like, do all that stuff. Um, the following week, Escobar said that Mysterio was his hero, but after meeting him, he realized he was wrong. A confrontation with the other LWO members, Joaquin Cruz and Zelina Vega, occurred where Escobar attacked Wild and Del Toro. See? Yeah, I figured. Uh, Carlito came out for the say, but Escobar escaped. Later, a match between Carlito and Escobar was scheduled for Survivor Series War Games. Um, did you watch SmackDown last night, or... Friday. No, but I watched the no. highlights. I started watching it before. I started watching it before we got on. Okay, so did you see what he was wearing? Uh, well, it looked like he, he. Well, he didn't have anything that said. Oh. 
but I did notice no, his didn't. hand. Yeah, you know, he he looked like he did before when he when he wasn't in LWO. He came out, you know, in really nice clothes, you know. But he had LWO like on his hand. On his hand, because he's still yeah. he's still representing it, yeah. but he he was wearing a Tony Montana suit. Oh, is that what it was? That's okay. what it was. Uh, what was it? Red and white, the red and white Miami suit. Okay. Yeah, it's the red uh, shirt. I've never seen it's, Scarface. So. Scarface, oh, it's fine. That's right. Uh, <laughs> he was so? wearing the red shirt, the white suit, and then the handkerchief and the and the pocket with the white pants. And as soon as mm-hmm. I saw that, my name is Tony Montana. I'm like, oh my God, Santos, you're a man. You're a genius, sir. You're a genius. This is gonna be amazing. Uh, I love the fact that Zelina Vega did what she did. Yeah. She slapped, she slapped the hell out of him. She <laughs> slapped him. Okay, so this match, where are we going with this? How are we predicting who is winning? I think Santos is going to win. I don't think, I, I mean, I know it's Carlito's, you know, first pay-per-view or PLE. Fizz. For a long time, you know, for for a long time, but I don't think Santos is gonna lose. I think he's winning. Yeah. I mean, Carlito came out for the save last time. Yeah, but then he hasn't been like rarely scheduled on there. He's like he's in here fight. for like, yeah, he's had one fight and he's in here for like, you know, uh, I'm gonna push you. So push Santos Escobar. So Santos is gonna do the heel thing. Beat Carlito, possibly do what he did on NXT and like take Carlito away with him, and then mm-hmm. brainwash him, and then <laughs> put him in a mask and then do the whole like I was Fantasma with him. Yeah, because that would be great to do on this with Carlito. I haven't yes, seen him do it since you know, was it a uh, when did he first come out? Like a few a month ago. Oh, it was a uh, backlash because it was in. Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. So that's the last. That's you know the first time we saw him when he you know redebuted, and then you know he came for the the tag match, but uh, and then he's only had one solo match since then. I didn't see him do that. Nope, we didn't see him. I didn't see him either. I haven't seen him do any of that stuff at all. No. Um, okay. Next match. Rhea Ripley defends her women's WWE Women's World Championship against Zoe Stark. At Crown Jewel, Zoe Stark was part of a fatal five way match for Rhea Ripley's Women's World Championship, which Ripley retained. On the following episode of Raw, Stark won a battle royal to face Ripley for the title one on one at Survivor Series. Obviously, Mommy. Obviously. Uh, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> we're going to go with Mommy. I don't see her losing the belt until WrestleMania. And even then, let's just keep it on her until, you know, if we can have a, a freaking four-year-long champion, Roman Reigns, let's just have a, the same thing with the uh, longest reigning women's world champion. Yeah. Because, let's see. Uh, she wanted... Because what would be next for Rhea? After that, just nothing. There's no other belt she could get because <laughs> she's had all no. of them. Exactly. Unless like, they want to uh, give her the raw belt too. I mean, the SmackDown belt. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> mommy two <But> belt. <laughs> mommy two belt. Oh my god, that and should it's be on the shirt. Universal Women's Champion. <laughs> Universal Women's Champion, Mommy two belt. That's, That's on a shirt next time. Let's put that on a shirt. <laughs> I gave you the idea. Um, you gave me the idea. We're going to go with it. We're going to roll with it. We're going to have mommy two belts. You're going to wear it proudly. That's going to be for you. Yes. Yes, sir. I would. I sure would. Okay. So since then, um, what have we seen in the women's division? The women's division has been freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nia Jax came back. That was horrible. Yeah. 
Um, you know, with her, I mean, she's a good wrestler, but she's yeah. too careless. She's too stiff. You know what I mean? She, just, she had an interaction she with um, Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. and she's all like, "Hey, the last time I remember, the last time I remember um, you, you were bleeding." And mm-hmm. then uh, Becky said, "I was like, oh yeah, the last time, yeah, you did, you did beat my butt. You did, you made me bleed. But the last time, but the, but then I did. Um, I went on to WrestleMania main evented. The last time I saw you, you were getting fired." <laughs> and I said, mic drop, ma'am. Yes. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> um, since then, Becky Lynch has held the NXT championship. Lost it to Lyra Valkyria. Uh, that was okay, I guess. But I wasn't into it. Like, I figured she'd, like, hold on for, like, a little while. But I guess so. She dropped it to the right person. Yeah. Um... What else? Trish left. Bye. Zoe Stark has been like constant freaking beating ass. She's kicking ass. She's doing amazing. Um, the women's division has been amazing, basically. I would say I did like Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler teaming together. Yes. I did that was like good. That. And it just was I confusing. Think that's where it's wasn't Shayna supposed to be a face after she dropped um, Ronda Rousey? Now that Ronda Rousey's no longer around, she turned heel. Like she went back and forth, and then she turned. She like got into Zoe's face, and then they teamed with together. And then it's like, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Zoe can't play a face at all. No, they tried that on NXT. She did. She did such an amazing job as a heel. Yeah. You know, I think um, just leave let her be let them be heels together. Right. Uh Zoe here is the heel. Rhea is like she loved. Basically we love Rhea. Yes. Cause like she's, she's the in leader. Between. She can be a face. She's a she's the leader. She's a face and a heel at the same time here. She can do it. She's the leader uh, so... of the second day. I don't care what Damian Priest says. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Rhea Ripley, Mommy Tube Out. We're gonna, we're, we're all for it. Hey, welcome to the Sweet Life Pod, the show where we create special moments with special people. I'm your host, Sakari Masters. In the Sweet Life Pod, we'll be discussing individuality, peace of mind, and how to attain and uphold meaningful relationships. If this sounds fitting, and follow the Sweet Life Pod on Spotify now. Thank you. In a world where true crime meets the supernatural and the unexplained. Where true crime and chills go hand in hand. Welcome to Total Conundrum, the podcast that explores the dark, the eerie, and the downright mysterious. Join us as we embark on a spine-tingling journey through the mysteries that keep you up at night. We're diving deep into true crime stories, uncovering the most baffling cases, and exploring the twisted minds behind them. But we don't stop there. We're also exploring the paranormal, from haunted houses to cryptids and all the creepy things that go bump in the night. Get ready for some supernatural thrills. And what sets us apart? Prepare for a dose of dark humor as we navigate through the creepy and bizarre. <laughs> We've got it all. Bone chilling tales, banter, and mind boggling conundrums. You won't know whether to scream or laugh. <laughs> so grab your favorite snack Turn down the lights and join us for a roller coaster ride of true crime and the supernatural sprinkled with a bit of comic banter. Stay curious, stay captivated, and let's dive into the world of Total Conundrum. Now available on your favorite podcast platform. Get ready to be captivated, creeped out, and cracked up with Total Conundrum. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, next match, Gunther versus The Miz for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. On the October 30th episode of Raw, Intercontinental Champion Gunther was supposed to be a guest on The Miz's talk show, Miz TV. However, Miz was interrupted by Gunther's Imperium stablemate, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Koiza, who stated that Gunther would not appear. After some arguing, however, Gunther came out and stated that he did not respect Miz as he viewed Miz more as an entertainer than a serious wrestler. <sighs> He's been saying a lot of shady stuff. <laughs> He's been saying a lot of shady <laughs> stuff lately. Uh, he said the same thing about the Ultimate Warrior, that he was an entertainer as well. He didn't have any substance towards him. And he's been saying it now about The Rock. Same thing that The Rock. The Rock is not a new Hulk Hogan. I'm like, sir, <laughs> calm down, sir. Just say you want a match against The Rock. It's all good. Yep. Challenge uh, him. <laughs> challenge him. Say something. Tell him, like, hey, you're, are you back in Hollywood? Just same thing John Cena did. See what happens. Uh, with Miz then saying that he himself was the one who had more who had made the Intercontinental Championship prestigious, he did, and could do it again. He can. After Imperium began to, to destroy the Miz's TV set, Miz attacked Imperium, but Gunther got the upper hand, turning Miz's face for the first time since January 2020. Really? Later, Miz asked Raw General Manager Andrew Pierce for a championship match against Gunther, but Pierce declined as there were others who also wanted a title match. A fatal four-way match was then scheduled for the next episode to determine Gunther's challenger for the Intercontinental Championship at Survivor Series, which Miz won. Ah, uh, sorry, Miz. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no. Sorry, Miz. I don't see him winning against Gunther. Oh I think my he's, god! I think Gunther. You know. One thing I will say about Gunther, he does not need to cheat to win. No, even you know, like and, Vinci and Kaiser yeah. being there at all. It's just like, why are you guys there? Nope. Just chop Miz. The Miz is going to have some red freaking Yeah. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many chops are you thinking? Uh, prediction of how many chops we're going with 10. <laughs> That's as much as Miz can take. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if it goes more than ten, he it's overkill. But you know, we're yeah. going with we're. Uh, I'm going to say ten. Yeah. The man is going to be sore. He is done with after that night. Yeah. But he's not winning the championship belt at all, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Unless he cheats. But no. Yep. Yeah, I say that that would be the only way because Gunther is really he's a really good athlete. Yes, and he he's is. a really good fighter. I'm I'm impressed by him. So. He truly is. I, I love him. everything about him. His matches against mm -hmm. Ilya Dragunov, like that entire 2020 match when we yeah. were in the pandemic in a in the UK with no people in the arena, and then just each other chopping each other off. And oh my god. Mm -hmm. The most bloodiest match ever on the chest. Didn't, didn't they do that in NXT too? Not just in the UK. He he did it in NXT also. He right. they did it in, on the NXT UK, and then okay. because it was so hyped up and it was put on YouTube and it was like a lot of views and everything, they said, "All right, let's put it on NXT." Um, one of the okay. one one of the NXT pay per views and. Let's see what happens from there. And they did. And it was amazing also. Yeah. It's like a part two, part it three was. type of match. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing that it. and I was like, wow. Right? I was, I, you know, I was, I hadn't seen Dragunov fight before that. But I was like, no, oh, but wow. During that, I became yeah. a fan. I said yes. Uh, trying to look for the, what he said, what. Um, it's kind Gunter of crazy. Said, there it is. Gunther's thoughts on The Rock. I think he, the new Hulk Hogan, I think in terms of if you ask random people on the street in some random country, they will say The Rock and connect it with wrestling and most famous, but I categorize him as a showman as well. He just said the same thing about The Ultimate Warrior, how he was just a showman. Like, he's there, oh, he's there for show. He didn't have any substance. He didn't do anything. 
And I'm like, sir, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You're going to lose yeah. that belt. You're going to, and especially like right now, the Ultimate Warrior passed away, sir. He's a legend. You can't yeah. be saying that. Like, no matter what happens, like, we we still respect him, but, you know, yeah. like, he did some shitty ass shit. But still, <laughs> you do not speak ill of the dead. And I'm thinking, like, he might have, he, like, he got the, he got the clearance to say this now because uh, Mrs. Warrior is no longer part of the roster anymore. And the whole, um, what, the Warrior Award is gone now? Is it? I so, thought, yeah. I thought they still had it. They they released her this year, so they oh. did it for one more, and then like if they do it again for next year, that's that'd be great. It's like, hey, let's bring her back. Yeah, but like they released her, so why have it? Because he's a legend. We already he's talked a legend. about him. No. <laughs> um. All right. So Gunter here, obviously, of course. Yes. Uh, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, men's war games or the women's war games? Which one? Which uh, one are you excited men's. for? The men's. The men's, all right. Well, boys, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned headbanger. Yes. The men's war games. Cody Rhodes versus Seth Frickin' Rollins. Oh, I'm sorry. Cody Rhodes, Seth Frickin' Rollins, Jay Uso, and Sami Zayn versus the Judgment Day. Damien Priest, Finn Valor, Dirty Dominic, and J.D. McDonough. Um, on the Judgment Day um, side, it's going to be uh, Drew McIntyre, of course. Um, let's not so, get ahead of ourselves. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, last year, it was five against five. Yes. So, I wonder, are we doing that again? We could be. They could be. They could announce on Monday that um, mm-hmm. Drew is uh, doing all, you know, joining. Sure. Uh, since June, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, Jay Uso, and Zemi Zayn have all been involved in with various rivalries with the Judgment Day, um, and their associate JD McDonough. Let's just say he's there now. And compassing matches for Rollins. Well, they Championship did say that Judah. you know he's a member. Member. Yeah, he uh, is now. On Monday, yeah. He is now, so. uh, and, which has been exchanged between Rose Uso and Balor and Priest. At the conclusion of the November 6th episode of Rye, brawl ensued between all eight men. Fed up with the constant chaos caused by Judgment Day, Raw General Manager Adam Pierce announced that Rollins, Rose Uso, and Zayn would face Judgment Day and McDonough in a War Games match at Survivor Series. It's, you want to play games? You want to play games? We all want to play games. Let's play the game. War games. <laughs> what? Um, William Regal does it better. I still say. I still say William Regal does it better. He just looks at everybody and then everybody stares at him. It's like say it, say it, say it. It's like war games in an English accent, of course. <coughs> oh my God, my throat already. Come on. Hold on, drinking from the well. Okay. <laughs> uh, the following week, Rose and Priest were revealed as the leaders of their respective teams, while McDonough was made an official member of the Judgment Day. Additionally, a single match between the member of each team was scheduled for the next week to determine who would get the advantage in the War Games match. If not, I guess Drew McIntyre. I thought Drew McIntyre was going to be in it. But if not, I guess then no need for it. Well, so I, mean, just I came guess out. we're gonna find out. <laughs> Maybe Monday so we'll just, find out. Yeah, so he just came out to like mess with people and everything. But if Drew McIntyre joins, that means that Cody Rose team needs one more person. So here's the prediction: Who do you think is gonna be that fifth person? There's uh two people that is um. Rumors. I uh, know. No, I say, forget the rumors. I think we should. Go. Kevin Owens. Oh wow! Yeah. So that Kevin Owens you know, on SmackDown though. I, well, Becky Lynch yeah. came to that's SmackDown. True. She's from Raw, so that's I true. say that's what we do. 
Cody Rhodes, Cody. Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn, and K. Owens again. Yes. That's great. Um, but this time they're fighting together, not against each other. <laughs> that'd be the great story right there. Yeah. Like last, and they're, they're going to bring it up too. Like last year they were against each other. This year they're brothers in arms. They're going to do all this stuff and then go mm-hmm. straight towards the top and everything, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this could be Zemi Sane's second um, win in a War Games match. Cody Rhodes first in a War Games match in the match that his father created. Yeah. I love that. I hope they include that also. Or if yeah. they have. Um, uh, Seth Rollins. Jay, Jay Uso's uh, second match as well. So yeah, pretty much I love um, that all these people are in this match. Dominic Mysterio in a War Games match. This is crazy. Like He has been working his ass off. And I, I was like, by... In a few years, I say he's going to be a world champion. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> like, the friggin' the booze on that one. Jeez. Like, I can't wait for um, Angry Dom Girl. Wait. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Angry Dominic Girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to show up every time. All right, so the rumors where... That either uh, Randy Orton or CM Punk, because CM Punk, because it's going to be in Chicago, so CM Punk is a part of the rumor that he's going right. to. They're going to announce him. There, the obvious great choice would be uh, Randy Orton, of course, because Cody Rose and Legacy, Legacy, yeah, it's Legacy uh, storyline and all that stuff, and because Randy Orton's been practicing with the NXT people in the Performance Center. So that's part of the rumor. The other part of the rumor is that, you know, um, DM Punk is around. He doesn't work for AEW anymore and all this stuff. He, and he's been, like, trolling and posting stuff uh, about both sides, doing the devil stuff with AEW, and, like, posting the matches between him and um, Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. on his Instagram. So it's hilarious when everybody's all like, are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? And then you have him um, doing his commentary at at this UFC fight. Not the UFC fight. This MMA um, place where he's at. And they're just like egging him on. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> and some of the com- uh, the announce- some of the commentators there with him was holding, had a uh, WWE handkerchief on his pocket. So, like, everybody's been like, he's going to the, he's going to be at War Games. He's going to be at War Games. He's going to be in Chicago. So, let's say it is Randy Orton. Either way. That would be good. I think that would be, I think that would be good. I don't, you know, I don't know. If CM Punk came, I don't think it would be good because. Seth Rollins has already said he don't like him. He needs to stay away, you know. And so to put CM Punk on the same, you know, PLE as Seth Rollins and even put him on this is going to be crazy. Yeah. Because, I mean, you already got, he already told Cody, I don't like you, you know. (laughs) I respect you, but I don't like you. But just for one night, you know, I'll I'll show up and be there for you. Yes. That's just adding more fuel to the fire. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, so there's that. So as for the prediction of who's going to win. I think it's going to be Cody. I think it's going to be Team Cody. Team Cody? Yep. Oh, I think it's going to be Team Cody. Okay. Cody as much as <laughs> okay, I, know, so I think we have... might, differ, <laughs> might, might differ, but <laughs> so Rollins has that broken back story still going on that he's hurt and everything, so Ooh. that may play a factor. Uh, Seth, oh, he's they that may play a factor on it. Oh, I'm sure um, they're going to target him in his back, yeah, so. But as I champion, think, like go last, go last, just to make yeah. sure, just go last. Don't go in there first. Yeah. Um. 
as for Judgment Day, I like they don't need to win this match. They're already like huge. But if yeah. the Drew does get involved, like I don't think Drew is going to join a freaking uh, stable just so that they can lose. Yeah. Like if Drew does join, it. but if not, then I'm going to say Cody's team. If Drew's part of this war game match, then uh, Judgment Day. <clears throat> we'll see what happens on Monday. We're going to find out what happens on Monday. And yeah. um, we'll see who gets Monday the Ross, advantage. We'll see who gets the advantage. Yeah. So after that, we'll just like go along with everything that they did. And then recap on next week after that. In a world where the spooky and supernatural collide. Two friends go on an epic journey to the other side. Hi, I'm Rain. Hi, I'm Luna. And we're the hosts of Spooky Natural. A podcast where we try to make a skeptic into a believer. Check us out to hear spooky tales of ghosts alien encounters, cryptids, and all other unexplained mysteries. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and join our Facebook group. And listen wherever you get your podcasts. Spook you later! match, not the main event. I don't even know if it's the main event or not, but we'll see. Team Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, and just added to the mix, Becky Lynch versus Damage Control, Bailey, Asuka, Io Sky, and Kairi Sane for the Women's War Games match. At SummerSlam, Bianca Belair defeated Asuka and Charlotte Flair in a triple threat match to win the WWE Women's Championship. But immediately after the match, Io Sky cashed in her Money in the Bank contract and defeated Belair to win the title. After the event, Damage Control, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Sky began feuding with Asuka, as well as Flair, who sided with Asuka. Damage Control would also ensure Belair's knee, taking her out for the next couple of months. During the time, Sky retained her championship matches against Asuka and Flair, thanks to interference from Bailey and Dakota Kai. After Belair made her return in October, Sky retained the title against her at Crown Jewel. After returning Kairi Sane in her first appearance since July 2020, interfered. On the following SmackDown, Sky and Kai said that they brought Sane in to make their group stronger. Sane praised Bailey for her leadership of damage control and also said that she forgave Bailey for attacking her back in July 2020. The group then embraced but were interrupted by Bel Air, Flair, and Asuka, with Bel Air stating that she assumed wrong of Sky, believing that Sky could defend the championship without help. A six woman tag team match then took place, which ended in a contest after Asuka turned on her team. The. What a twist. <laughs> Yeah, subsequently, that was subsequently reuniting with Sane and joining with Damage Control. Shotzi attended to make the save, but it was laid out by Damage Control. The following week, Damage Control challenged Bel Air, Flair, Shotzi, and a partner of their choosing, which was later revealed to be Ross, Becky Lynch, to a War Games match, which was accepted. That same night, though, he announced that fan vote would be held to determine which team would receive the War Games advantage. Oh, we get to vote. <laughs> okay, we get to vote. Cool. A um, couple of things because of what happened on Friday Night SmackDown uh, with uh, what is it? Shit. Shot. Uh, okay, so Asuka, Eosky, Kairi Sane and Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai is basically the middle person there. Asuka, Eosky and Kairi Sane were all talking together in Japanese saying how you know, they were just amongst each other. And then Bailey's like the odd woman out, like right yeah. there in the middle. And she's all like, whoa, 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 what did they say? <laughs> like the yeah. little stutter. The little stutter. The little thing. Oh my God, I love it. Um, and the Kodokai is like, comes up and she's like, well, um, 
they're just saying how um, damage control is not yet a strong stable or something like that. And, right. you know, because Asuka is not, you haven't, like, brought in Asuka as part of the stable yet. You haven't officially let her in yet. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, ooh. Like, they are freaking she was, like, gaslighting her. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, gaslighting her. there, And the fact that Bailey is growing her hair again. Um, I love it. Another thing is that when Bianca, Shotzi, and Charlotte were backstage and they're like, find someone, and Charlotte's all like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let me think, let me think. Go to Becky Lynch's TikTok, <laughs> and there's like her, there's a video of her. She did a video on TikTok where she's just like looking at the computer and everything, and then she looks at her phone and it rings, and it's you see Charlotte's name on there, and then she like throws the phone away. It's like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs it again and looks at it. It's like why are you calling me? Stop it! And then puts it away. Finally, she does it again. Calls, grabs the phone. It's like what? What do you want? What do you want? It's like oh. Okay. And then, like, she edits it out, and then she's out uh, backstage, and she goes out to the ring. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish they would have shown us uh, on WWE at all. But the fact that they did it uh, on TikTok, it's like, oh my god, they're gonna do this! I love it! Um, obviously, we know who the winner's gonna be here. <laughs> Uh, Bianca, Charlotte, Shotzi, and Becky. Yeah. And then they're gonna get rid of Bailey. <laughs> they're gonna yeah. turn on That's Bailey. That's what I'm thinking. Because they're, they're like, oh, you know, they have, you know, the Japanese connection. They you do. Know? And the Kota Kai is just sitting there. It's like, she's from New Zealand. Yeah. But it's like, hey, so I, like, I, I understand but she everything. She may know Japanese, you know. She may know Japanese, you know. Like, I understand but, everything. I'm the middle person here. Yeah, I know. I'm fluent in all these languages. No. Yeah, that's um, how I'm like, yeah, the, I think I think that's, and I've been thinking that, and I've told you that before, because I've said it yes. before, I think in, uh, in August, I was like, yeah, I think they're going to turn on, you know, I think EO's, we'll see, I was like, EO's going to turn on him. And the fact that yeah. Dakota should not be trusted because uh, somebody posted on Twitter uh, pictures mm-hmm. of why the Dakota should not be trusted. First of all, uh, this would be like, no, Dakota's not in the War Games match, but like the first War Games match she was in in NXT, she, the countdown happened and she walks out of the cage, but then she hit a kick to her tag partner. Yeah. And knocks her out and everything. Tegan Knox. Yes, Tegan Knox. And yes. Like, oh, like their best friends and everything. They... Because I saw them fight in Portland. Yes. Yes. Oh my God, that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was that was yes, and that was when um Raquel came. Was Raquel came and helped Dakota Kai, and that's yes. another picture that we saw. Like yeah. she uh, betrayed. Uh, Tegan Knox, and then like a year later, she betrayed uh, Raquel. Raquel. Yep, and won the belt. And then, oh no, she took she didn't win the belt. She like betrayed her. It's like I oh, want the belt and everything. So here, like oh hey, it's funny, huh? They're just saying no, it's no problem. We're good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be funny if she was she's faking the injury. She's not injured anymore, and like she takes out Bailey, and Bailey, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch reunite. Yeah, but but like she's done a lot a lot of stuff lately. Yeah, but um, it'd be funny if the code guy is like, I've been it's been me all along. I've been the like the mastermind behind all of this. 
and I was the one who told you we should have got we should get EO, you and me and all this stuff. And then bring in Kyrie saying, Oh, that elbow drop. Mm-hmm. That elbow drop is insane. I love it. I haven't seen that on uh, a freaking epic elbow drop. Macho Man's Randy Savage elbow drop is the best elbow drop. Kyrie saying it's the next one after that. Yeah. Like she uses that little point in her elbow. I know she drives it. And I'm just like, son yeah. of a fish. And when she goes up, she like freaking she like hops up there. She hops Same up time. there and then she yeah. like yeah. cocks it back. It's like Ugh! <laughs> goes down. Yes. It's like, how do you how dare you? Um she's not using the pirate thing again, the pirate gimmick, which like they should have let her use it for the 2020 WrestleMania pay per view in um, Baltimore. Was it Baltimore? No, it wasn't Baltimore. It was in Tampa Bay. Basically, mm-hmm. the whole pirate thing. Yeah. But that would have been great. But here, I hope she uses it on top from the top of the uh, cage. You know, on someone at least. Yeah, then... is going to be like on top of that cage too. She gonna do all that of them, again. All of them. Okay. <laughs> Eel Sky on top of the cage. Kyrie staying on top of the cage. Asuka throwing in like Miss Bailey getting lost. Bailey's gonna go in first. You just know that. You think so? I think she's maybe gonna be she like will, last. Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe she will be last. And yeah. like trying to like, <laughs> I'm like trying to get not to be involved in your way. Let's do yeah, this. Exactly. Now, I think she's going to go last stutters, because she wants to be the freshest. She the don't have freshest the stamina there, to go an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it was going to be an awesome pay per view. I can't wait for it. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to have to go watch the uh, the aftermath of that. The all the stuff after. I hope they talk about everything that's going to happen. Uh, yeah. The press conferences after, like I'm still gonna post them online. You know, I have in ever since they started posting the press conferences, I'm like, I have not watched a single one, except for like, like little tidbits here and there. Because right, or I'll post them the on, on here. No, right, no. So I've seen. Uh, so the last one you did, I started watching it a little bit, but of course it was after. I watched the event because yeah. I don't know what it is, but I can never, I mean, I like watching it live, but I like being a little behind, but not like hours behind. Yeah. Not hours behind, but like you know? enough to like know what's happening or what well, happened. Because I want to fast forward through some of the commercials. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, I shouldn't say all the commercials because, you know, because we have Peacock that has the commercials. So yeah, you yeah, can, so they, uh, you know, I'll fast forward through like, uh, like when they start doing the recap of what leads to the, the match, you know, I'll fast forward through that, you know, so Correct. I was like, but if you watch it live, you can't fast forward through that. You can't. So I'm like, yeah. Huh? You can't fast forward through any of that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll watch it a little. I'm like, okay, I'll be like an hour behind. But then WWE wants to email me or text me what happened. And I'm like, no, no spoilers. <laughs> Don't spoil it for me, please. Yeah. And, you know, that's why yeah, a lot of time, uh, what was it? The, so at Crown Jewel, I, uh, I never got, I saw you were streaming. But I was like, you know what? There's there's that slim chance that he's going to talk about it. And I'm like, I haven't watched it. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that's, it. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's all you got to say. Either either I'll say, like, yeah, I watched it, but I'm not going to say anything. Or I'm just like, nobody well, will no, talk well, about it. The last time, it was something, and I hadn't watched it yet. And another another person in the stream was like, oh, did you see this? And I'm like... 
Okay, I'm no! leaving. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I'll leave you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> but of course, you know, because you're ahead of me, you you see it, and you know, of course, like you see Raw before me and SmackDown before me because of the time change, you know, time difference. And but like, this I is what happens when you when you um, <laughs> vote for Logan Paul to win no. against Ricochet. It shit, more shit happens like this. Like this is basically my fault. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, I I completely agree. <laughs> Because I am, not, I'm now. I will say, he is a good athlete. Yes. I will say that about him. He does, you know, he's not just but one he of them. So me off. He does. I'm like, you know what? You don't need to cheat. You know, if you have to take the loss, take the loss. You know, but you know, he's yeah. He's actually, you know, he's you. He's he looks good out there. You know, and he's he's not sloppy, I guess you could say. You know, he does look like he's been training. So good for him. But I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm like, so when's he gonna defend it? Come on. He's one of those that, oh, I'll come every two or three months or when there's like a big event. I'm like, no, we need this thing to be defended. I mean, we I know Roman right does now. the same thing, but you know. Hey. <laughs> yeah. For real. For sure. Roman is Roman. Come on. <laughs> you know? But I'm like, come on, Logan Paul. Show your face. Defend that title. Or drop it. You know. Or drop it. Or do whatever. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! Movies and feelings. Pop Pop! Bring Your Own Popcorn is a podcast that dives into people and the movies who love them. Let us preach to your choir or stoke your ire as we spiral down memory lane with cult classics, Jurassics, and other genres that rhyme with traffic. What we lack in education, we make up for with comedy, compassion, and camaraderie. I'm your host, Mixtape Majesty, inviting you to join me and an assortment of wonderful guests on fine podcast apps everywhere. Bring Bring Your Own Popcorn! Um, anything else we want to bring up? I think, I think we're good. I'm good, I should say. <laughs> Roman been champion for how many years? Yeah, we already said it. Like three years now. We're it's good. been over three years, we yep. We, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> <clears throat> you already talked about that I haven't seen him. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, we lost a lot of wrestlers. Bray Wyatt mm-hmm. passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, so did Cactus Cactus Jack? No, not no. Cactus. Ta- Terry Terry Funk. Terry. Yeah, Funk. Like, Why am I confusing both? Don't say that. <laughs> not Cactus. Not Mick Foley. Uh, Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt passed away. I couldn't do an an episode about that I wanted to but I was like oh man this is too much like both yeah. of them but I did do the whole 10 bell salute for both of them mm-hmm. so there was that like we did that we did that good um lately doing the um glow series I found a lot of good stuff good I'm loving it I'm gonna have like, to like watch this cause I mean I, I saw a- it on Netflix and I was like, and I've, it's kind of like, oh, it's in my queue. Yeah. So I'm like, so I need to actually like pull it up and watch it. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and next one, oh, I'll invite you on and we can do like a rewatch recap of the show. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> what was going to say? Oh, yeah. Mark Marin, the, the uh, director uh-huh. of the, in the, the show, the one that brought all the girls together. He has a podcast of his own. And okay. so he's during the show. So there's like a thousands of episodes because he's had this podcast in 2017, 2016. The 2017 episode that I'm looking at right now, the week that the show started, that it premiered, it was on episode 821. Like this dude has been talking about this forever. Wow. It's like, damn. So I'm listening to him talking about with Alison Brie and Betty Ilkin, Bilpin, uh, Ruth and Debbie on the show. Mm-hmm. So they, they have a lot of stuff to say about the show. So I'm going to try to include those, like every episode that he's doing with um, all the cast members and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look into that, listen to it and see what happens. Because I'm also doing some stuff with the original Glow Girls like reading up what they thought about the show and all that. And then this, it's like, so yes, I have a lot going on. Yeah. And I'm loving the fact that Glow is a good thing. And I want to keep it going. Like, so, like all three seasons, let's let's do all three seasons on here. <laughs> and with the awesome. occasional rest, real wrestling stuff, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so next time, we'll I'll get you in there. And everything. And yeah. So are we uh, are we done? Are we gonna end this here? Are we <laughs> ready for war games or is this gonna like yeah. uh, you think there's gonna be another match? Should there be another match involved in this? I don't know. Because you like, figure what they put each of the war games is an hour. Well, at least an hour, right? Why isn't Logan Paul on the Shakard? Yeah, I don't know. Who is he disputing with right now? <laughs> uh, we can. Uh, no. Well, he probably it probably would be Santos Escobar. Logan Paul or Santos? Like, yeah. Because remember, he's like, oh, you know, this, you know, he stole my, you know, he kept saying, you know, you stole his chance and blah blah blah. So. Um, Ricochet, but I want to save that match for WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, I want them to save that match for WrestleMania in Philly. That'd be a great thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of anybody else. The United States Championship needs to be defended, of course. Yeah. Again, and I'm glad they're doing the Intercontinental invasion. on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the focus. Yeah. Like, this belt is being defended, and then Rhea Ripley is being defended. So yeah, two be- at least two belts are being defended out of the yeah. ten belts that are out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, they need to have a women's tag team match. The tag you know, team on one of these live events. Yes, they do. Because you know, I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's nice that they're defended on Raw and SmackDown. But I'm like, come on now. But then again, there's not really any tags, you know, actually tag teams. You know, ch- you know, mat- you know, not matches, but, you know, actually tag teams that are women. They yeah. keep throwing all of these different women together. Except, you yeah. know, Isla Dawn and, what was it? You know, Isla Dawn and Elba Fire. And the American and, Ninja Girl. Yeah. And her um, partner. I'm like, how come they aren't using them? As yeah, except for you know, in in backstage, and you know, I'm like, come on, want to see them fight? Yeah, exactly. We want to see them fight. We want to see them wrestle. Yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully, they do that next time. Um, next pay per view is probably going to be in December. Nope. Like, we'll it's just, Royal Rumble. No? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Our next pay per view prediction is going to be in Royal Rumble in, in January. Yeah. So, can't wait for that. Uh, and that's going to be do it for us here 
on the podcast. Um, Menace, yes. thank you for coming on. As always, you're a um, pleasure. It's been my pleasure. It's so fun. It's always fun to have you on here. Okay. <laughs> I love when you're on here. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we're going to go. As always, follow us on our socials and support us from on the apron on Instagram, the thread, YouTube, apron underscore stories on the Twitter. More info on the links where you can listen or watch in the show notes. Listen to us on Apple, Spotify, or any other audio media. You can listen to podcasts on, and because y'all asked for it, guess what? Guess what? 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 We have we have merch. Yes. Merch. We've got some merch. Go buy our merch. We've got some merch. Go buy our merch. I got merch. You got merch. I got the merch, yeah. You got the merch? Oh, shit. Fellow yeah. podcast supporters, you are in for a great deal. A friend of the podcast that goes by the name, the big friendly giant, helped a bunch. He came through. He said he was fidgeting with the logo. And he made a new shirt, which will be available this coming Friday. Like, whenever you're listening to this uh, episode, it's, it's, it's there. It'll be there right now. Like, you know what? Let's throw it in on Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes, the twenty second. Early th- Thanksgiving Woo. gift. It, it's gonna go yeah, up on the. Tw- it's gonna go up on the twenty second. Let's put it up. This way, you have enough time to buy it, and let me know what y'all think. Can't wait to show it, you guys. In the meantime, check out the awesome designs that are up right now. I'm gonna put all of them up right now. The first, the, like phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, all of them. Um, the old podcast logo, the fatherless behavior logo. Go ahead and get them. They're 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 up. It, it's like I love how I'm naming them after phases because <laughs> you know, like the era thing is already played out. It's like era one. It's the fatherless behavior era though. So. But I love how I'm naming them after phases because I love Marvel. So phase one, yeah. phase two, phase three, phase four. The new one is going to be phase five. Wear them uh, and display them just in time for the holidays with your family get together and show them how you really feel. And if they say they like the shirt, buy them as a gift for Christmas. I have hoodies up there. I want. I'm gonna. And that's all I wear. Buy some. That's all you wear. I'm gonna go get some hoodies now, <laughs> like the new hoodies, the new the new uh, phases. Those Except will be up there. I did, get, I did get fatherless behavior in a t-shirt, but this is a from under the <laughs> This is a fatherless behavior network, man. We we support <laughs> fatherless behavior around here. I love that this is a thing. It's gonna continue to be a thing. Um, bunch of us were talking how it's like if I go back to doing a stream on TikTok that like they're not going to expect me to say fatherless behavior stuff. It's just be like, what? It's like, well, listen to the podcast, guys. Thank you. Welcome to the fatherless <laughs> behavior stream. <laughs> so, like, check out some fatherless behavior merch. Uh, link three will be in the show notes. Don't forget to rate us and leave us a review. And if you feel want to do a little bit more, go to patreon.com forward slash from the apron podcast. Support us on the Patreon. Become a top tier patron and get patron privileges. And I'll shut you out at the end of every episode. Right? Right. Should they do more? They should do a little bit more, right? They should do a little bit more, yes. If you top tier patron. <laughs> Top tier patron. <laughs> uh, of course, I'll shout you out on every episode. Just like Babel V, Menace Smiling, who Woo-hoo! took her patron privilege, uh, like haven't had used her patron privilege in a while. And she said, I'm going to be on this podcast. I'm going to be on these episodes in the next coming weeks because I haven't been on here in a while. So here she is. Uh, Damien H from Weezy Soup from the Life of a 30 Year Old Podcast. Y'all should check him out. He has some awesome, amazing podcasts. Uh, he talks about his life. Of, he is basically a memoir of him and his uh, life from being a kid up to now, the school, all that stuff. And plus, he bought a shirt from us. So, shout out to Weezy Soup, Damien H. 
thank you for buying a shirt. He bought a little tank top with the phase one uh, from under the apron podcast logo. I'm loving it. I'm saying let's go. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, shout out to him. Shout out to Chanel from the Nurse in Texas podcast. Cloudy in November from the No is a Sentence podcast. I Beloved Sai from the Sweet Life pod. I'll have the link to these podcasts in the show notes so you all can check them out. Love them. Also, check out Dark Fate Creations. Dark Fate Creations candles. You've had candles, right? You love these candles. Yeah. yeah. They're amazing. They smell great. I still have mine. I'm going to get another one pretty soon. I'm going to buy some for Christmas. i buy a family member for Christmas. Let's see what they think. But get shout out to Dark Fate Creations. We're going to do some more uh, stuff with other people as well. I, you'll, you'll know in the next coming weeks, I have a business opportunity with another person, with another streamer, and I hope, I hope it comes through. So we're going to do a lot of stuff with baking, cooking, all that stuff. I can't wait. I can't wait to freaking put him on, on here. I can't wait for to talk about his stuff. Um and all that. Mini Mommy Dancer, OMG is Ren, Hannah Time, Messenger to Pity, Cone of Shame Rabbit, Collector of All Things Sentimental, Celestial Moon Goddess, Toasted Bagel, Turtle Boy Flores, Leads Us Journey, The Sparkly Experiment, Lily Linguini, Age of Shadow 666, say it, Mufia! Mufia! <laughs> Ivan Campo Music, Marijuana Barbie, Queen of the Underworld, Wild Stark, Little Miss Confidence, Greenery, da -da -da, Dahlia, Hey, It's Me, Your Favorite Chick, Jaded Samia, Kit Kat Rubble, Narcissus, Just Another Dude, Sage and Biscuit, Tiger Princess, Claudia Ramos Design, Princess and the Wheat, The Big Friendly Giant, Kinky Delivery Service, Dan Cope, Jojo Kiki's Vlog, Dalo 17, Baby XOXO, Tiana Taylor, Sad Hope the Goddess, Pixie Ocean Dust, Baby Lexo, and Jenna Tolls. Shout out to Jenna Tolls. I hate my life. Thank you for supporting this podcast, patreon.com forward slash run on the apron podcast. Get your name shouted out. Support the podcast. Check out the show notes for links to other podcast stories that you heard on this episode. Send us a message for favorite wrestling stories, questions, comments, ratings, or requests at our email. It is from under the apron at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, joining the live, and being a huge part of this community. I really appreciate you all. We're coming up on year two. We're coming up on third season. Thank you all for this. You all have been amazing. Tell your friends. Join us next time for more behind-the-scenes stories, movies, and TV show reviews when we come to you from Under the Apron. Yeet! <laughs>